Hey, so how are you feeling today? You're feeling good? I really hope so. And if not, we can always quickly see and say why. Because the things that affect ultimately how we feel, how we are, who we are, are things we watch, things we listen to, things we say, things we think. All these things affect us and we don't even realize that. And um, the Bible says in Matthew 12 verse 34, you know, it's, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you know. So in Afrikaans it says, a saying we have in Afrikaans is, um, you know, what the heart van vol is, loop die mond van oor. And, and it really is that it's and, and your heart speaks about where you are in your life and how you speak how is your attitude um, all these things so if you end up if you're in a position in your life where you're really hurt then hurt tends to come out we don't want it we obviously don't want this thing these things you know and it and it takes a process to get through that stuff you know so you've got to be careful what you watch what you listen to um, and that ultimately affects because whatever comes in is the stuff we keep. Um, and then, um, but I want to remind you today in, in Psalms 139 verse 14, I love this. <laughs> I love this. David says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You were, you were, you were made wonderfully. You, you sitting there listening to this, you were wonderfully made. He says, marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. Um, and just before that, I like it, in Psalms 139 as well, in verse 13, he says, You wove me together in my mother's womb. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Now, anybody who knows knitting knows it, it's, a, it's, something, it's something I know I can't do. And I'm not, <laughs> you know. But can you imagine this? Now, I'm sitting this morning and I'm thinking, yes, while this is happening, God's forming, God's working. When a lady's pregnant, when... That baby is being formed, the heart gets formed, the lungs get formed, the little feet and the hands and the fingers and the fingernails and the hair starts growing as the trimesters go along, as you go through a pregnancy. God is continuously busy in there. How, what a feeling a woman must have. No wonder women experience such a vast amount of emotions and all these physical things and bodily things happening. And no wonder they, they go a little bit, can I use the word bonkers? Um, because you've got God working in you, physically in you. You know, God is spirit. So he's working there, getting this baby to look as perfect and as wonderful as he's creating him to be the same way he did with you. It's, 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 it blow, blows my mind. It blew my mind this morning. You know, and that word fearfully, uh, I had to quickly go check it because I always tend to revert back to, you know, fear. And, and, and fear is not a good word at all. But this meaning of the word fearful is completely different. Um, far apart in my opinion and you know when it's translated from the Hebrew it means great reverence heartfelt interest and with respect and then wonderfully comes along because you're fearfully and wonderfully made wonderfully comes along and says when that's translated it means unique and set apart so oh wow the verse actually says you were created with great reverence with so much respect heartfelt interest you were made and you were made unique and to be set apart because God has called you my friend he's called you to do something magnificent for his kingdom for his glory but it elevates you and it brings you to a place man uh, I also like in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 it tells you exactly what I've kind of been saying that you're a chosen people you're a royal priesthood a holy nation and I like I love this I love God's special possession how's that that you may declare the praise the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So God's called you out of the darkness and he works. And yes, it doesn't just change overnight, but God does change you overnight. But the process, that life in between from when you start, when God hits you till we, we step into his ultimate eternal glory. We have life in between, you know, and that is a learning, growing process. And everything we learn and grow shapes us to where we are going. You know, and if you, you know, God's love is perfect. Last night I was speaking to somebody and God kept reminding, just telling me, tell this, just tell them how much they are worth, how much I love them. And keep reminding that I can't change. You know, God can't change. God is perfect. God is love. And if God is perfect, that means his love for you can never change. Never. It can't, he can't love you more. He can't love you less. He loves you perfectly, unconditionally. If you really want to see what love is. Now, the Bible says God is love. 
And if you want to see what love is, go go read 1 Corinthians 13. I call it the love chapter. I wonder if it is called the love chapter. But I like that because it explains everything. It tells you about how love is patient. Love endures. Love fights. Love wins. Go read it. Go check it out. It's, it's actually phenomenal. And if you relate that to what God is, because God is all these things, because God is love. I hope it helps you to then start realize how much you are worth. The effort that he put in designing you, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, how you speak, the funny little beard I'm growing, and the fact that I can still do a nice little hairdo over here. If you do like your beautiful long locks, especially the ladies, oh man, you guys look fantastic with your long hair, especially after you use that um, it is the straightener, right? And you use those things. You guys look so phenomenal and beautiful, you know? And Romans 8, there's another one um, where it says, by the way, this is, this is actually important to end this off with, is... Nothing can take God's love away from you either. You can't be separated from the love of God. And Romans says this in chapter 8, verse 37 to 38. It says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. So there already, again, it tells you you're a victor. You're winning. You're a conqueror. You take ground, my friend. You take it all. You walk. You take it. Verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything created, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. That is an ultimate kind of love. It means that nothing you can do, not yesterday, nothing you can do today, can separate you. It can't take God's love away from you. And I hope, I hope you're getting this. I hope, you, I hope it's, this hits you. Of how important you are the Lord. That He loves you, my friend. And whatever it is that you're dealing with, go to Him. Go sit at His feet. Give it to Him. You can trust Him. God is not a man that He may lie. And if He's not nice and He doesn't help you deal with these hurts that you need to get past and these challenges that you are facing, if He can't help you with that, then He can't be God, can He? And... As I just said, it's not a man that he may lie. And you can trust him. The Bible says, where Jesus said, my burden is light. So cast it upon him. He'll help you get there. And start walking that phenomenal road that he has for you. Shine his light. Be the salt. And, and stand up. You are strong enough to stand up. We know this. Enjoy it. Have a great one.